Well, today is a significant day. It is the 50th anniversary of the launch of Apollo 11 on its four day uh, trip to the moon. This is the mission that finally put men on the moon and changed the course of human history. This morning, we're joined by NASA scientist Kelsey Young to celebrate this milestone anniversary. It's pretty amazing. It's been 50 years. Good morning, Kelsey. Thanks for having me. Well, we're wondering, I mean, this has got to be a big party time back there at NASA. How are you celebrating this huge, huge moment? Absolutely. It's a, just a momentous accomplishment, 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, and we here at NASA are just so excited. It's a great opportunity to look back on the amazing accomplishments of the Apollo missions, as, as well as look forward a little bit to what the future holds for lunar exploration. Um, there's a lot of ways you can celebrate. I encourage you to go to nasa.gov and find an event near you. Uh, we at NASA and, and other industry partners around the world are actually celebrating across the world, so we encourage you to go to nasa.gov to find an event near you. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be pretty amazing time here in the next few days. Now, when they brought the, the first moon rocks back on Apollo 11, some of them they kept sealed for future generations. Why did they do this and what are they going to do with those samples? Absolutely. I love that people in the Apollo program had the foresight to hold back some of the rocks. They didn't actually open all of them. They anticipated that in the decades after Apollo, new technologies would emerge that would enable us to look at those rocks with fresh eyes. And that's exactly what happened. So now NASA has decided to open previously unopened moon rocks and look at them with these fresh eyes. Right here at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, we have two different teams looking at these previously unopened samples. Pretty amazing. Right now, we're, you're planning uh, fairly soon, soon to come a uh, return of humans to the moon. They're going to the South Pole probably. Why is that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so NASA's Artemis program will send the first woman and the next man to the lunar surface. And why are we going to the South Pole? We've actually found in the last few years that there's actually water on the moon. The moon is actually a fairly wet place. And where a lot of this water is concentrated is in the South Pole. So by sending people to the South Pole, we'll be able to quantify just how much water is there and investigate how we might use it as a resource to establish more of a long-term sustainable human presence on the lunar surface. Boy, that's going to be really exciting, Kelsey. Thank you so much for joining us. And Happy anniversary. Happy to be here. Thank you.